All right, guys. So today we got the truth about thumb pulling. Um, yes, the method I credit to the majority of my facial development. I think the most common rebuttal for thumb pulling is that they always have to contrast it with the MSC, the medical um, skeletal expander, or any appliance in that genre of orthodontics. Look, people like to say thumb pulling does not work because it's not a real expander, but the mechanics are closer to MSC than you think. The MSC doesn't actually hold constant pressure either. It's not like it's pulling 24-7. You twist the screw, it applies a burst of force, usually around 10 to 20 pounds, and then nothing. It's a finite force, just like thumb pulling. MSC requires manual activation, producing intermittent rather than continuous force. You activate, then you wait, bone responds, you activate again. The difference is the MSC is able to hold that new shape versus thumb pulling, which I'll go over later. Now imagine that same process, but instead of a screw, you're pressing with your thumbs. Two biological activators. A decently strong person can press with 40 newtons per thumb, which is enough to meet or exceed the minimal amount of force to stimulate sutural strain in the mid-palatal and zygomatical maxillary sutures. Frost's mechanostat theory puts bone adaptive thresholds as low as 15 to 25 newtons in localized areas. In fact, Herring and Tang recommend that even minimal sutural strain, about 0.0015 meters of displacement over 0.03 meters of sutural length, was enough to register adaptive changes under natural loading. You're not trying to blast it open in a day, you're nudging it open over time. The mistake people make is that thinking thumb pulling is about one long pressure session a day. That's not how tissue adapts. Also, a main topic brought up is the central incisors not being separated while thumb pulling, which is the case because it doesn't work like it does for an MSC. MSC produces 20 to 60 times faster results. The periodontal ligament isn't able to adapt. The ligament that keeps your teeth together isn't able to adapt in time, so of course it's going to separate. Um, but for thumb pulling, and especially if you do it correctly, you're supposed to have more pressure over time in the posterior positioning of your palate. So just like how correct tongue posture over time will have more force in the posterior direction, because that's how your tongue works and your palate is designed. Um, it's gonna keep the arch aligned correctly. And the, the amount of duration it takes over, you know, the timeline of this development is way slower than the MSC. The MSC can produce, you know, we're talking four to six millimeters within just a few to a couple of months. But for thumb pulling, it's a way slower process. We're talking two or even one millimeter or maybe 2.5. For me, around two to three um, millimeters in a span of nine to 10 months. So, and that's with like, complete dedication. With MSC, once that 0.13 millimeters of expansion is gained, the metal holds that position. It locks it in. That's the big advantage. It holds tension over time. But think of thumb pulling like if you were to put the MSC in, expand it for 30 seconds, then take it out. And you keep doing that six to 10 times a day. If you don't keep it consistent, yes, you'll lose progress. Bone doesn't ossify instantly. If you thumb pull for three months and stop for two weeks, you can regress about 18 days of development, but it doesn't erase the whole thing. You still have a net gain from the consistent sessions. It's a slow compounding process, but just because it's harder to track doesn't mean it's not real. The big challenge with thumb pulling is that you're the appliance. You have to know your anatomy. You need to be pressing at the right place, typically just lateral to the incisive papilla to, you know, all the way down to your second to third molars of the avular ridge and i'll go over how to thumb pull more later because there's a lot of things i haven't revealed yet but most people do it wrong or inconsistently then call it a scam and sure msc is a better overall alternative for palatal expansion only for that um you know it's fast measurable gains but it disrupts natural swallowing facial muscle tone and orthotropic practice while it's in place. And although it fixes the structural problem in the moment, it doesn't fix the reason why those structures are in the problem. You can even stack thumb pulling with proper tongue posture to help maintain your gains. But yeah, it's not for everyone. It's not easy. 
But if you understand force vectors, applying them frequently enough, and giving yourself, you know, your sutures time to respond and ossify, it works. It's just biology and physics applied manually. Another thing about thumb pulling is that there's not enough evidence. So we have scientific logic, but there's not enough evidence. Um, you know, to perform this experiment properly, for one, no one's gonna th fund this. There's no, there's no um, benefit, financial benefit for companies or anything to fund these experiments. Um, or people who would do these experiments, because this is a very rigorous process. Um, I do recommend MSC, 100%. There's tons of types of appliances and surgical procedures in this genre. But for people who do not have access or do not feel like doing that, thumb pulling does work, but it really just depends on your genetics and your age. Um, some people's sutures ossify way faster or way more um, malleable um, or plastic compared to other people's sutures. Um, but yeah, also the safety concerns, um, occlusions can happen if you do it um, not correctly. You can uh, misalign your occlusal plane. You can do a lot of things, overbites, overjets. Um, if you're not pushing correctly, you're not, um, you don't know basic anatomy um, of the maxilla and the whole oral space. Um, but yeah, just be careful. If you are going to do thumb pulling, make sure you know what you're doing, you know the warning signs. Um, it's a long, rigorous process, but it does work.